Good afternoon and welcome to today's panel. My name is Lazarus Goosby. I'm an alum of Chicago State University, class of 09 and current president of CSU's Alumni Council Advisory Board. Today we have teamed up with the CTC CSU Alumni Association to bring you this exciting panel. The Honorable William J. Walker is a retired United States Army Major General and a 38th Sergeant at Arms of the U.S. House of Representatives, making history as the first black man assigned to that post. He's also a proud CSU alumnus. This is significant for our conversation today as his historic appointment reflects upon us as a proud community of alumni of Chicago State and the many of us as black men and women in America today. I've been excited to hear this conversation. Major General Walker will be joined by some of my friends, successful fellow alumni, as they discuss what CSU meant to each of them. They will reflect on how their unique shared experiences may have contributed to each of their journeys. I'll bet we'll see a little bit of ourselves in each panelist today. So with that, I'd like to introduce to you today's moderator, fellow CSU alumna, Spring Capers, class of 83, who's owned her own business in Chicago for over 30 years, Springs Place, the hair studio, and is a member of the Chicago State Foundation's Board of Directors. Spring, please take it away. Thank you, Lazarus. It is my honor and privilege to lead this discussion with fellow alumni um, and our journey, our experiences. We come from different generation, different background, different careers. And we've all had a very successful path to get to where we are today. So this is an impressive group. Of course, Lazarus told you about the Major General, but we have some other people that are just as exciting to hear about that came from Chicago State University. So first with us, I want to introduce you to uh, Queenus Early. She is class of 2002, and she is an account Direct, uh, director for Flowers Communications. She's a seasoned PR and marketing professional. Finally named Queenie. She has 12 years experience leading market strategies for notable brands that include McDonald's, Walgreens, among others, and has won several industry awards for her creativity. That's Queenie. Next, I have Dr. Richard Glass. He is in the class of 1998, lifelong educator with 25 years of education experience. Dr. Glass started as a teacher many years ago and has since moved into education leadership at several institutions. Currently, he is the chief executive and education officer for Ryan Banks Academy. Also, I have Le um, Elaine Granger. Elaine is in the class of 1992. She is the director at AT&T and external and legislative affairs. Elaine has an extensive background with over 30 years in the telecommunication industry and community relations. Um, we will wait uh, to hear from the Major General. He has a busy weekend. He received a leadership award last night from Chicago State. He is currently doing an interview, so he will join us later. So I'm ready to start the discussion with the panel. All right, this is what I want to talk to um, with you guys, being alumni from Chicago State. I came out in 83, so we go over 20 year span here. So my first question to our group is, um, what connected you to Chicago State? Like what brought you there? Are we all from Chicago? Cause you know, we are proud to say South side, what area we came from. I'm from Gresham, uh, Auburn Gresham. So I wanna hear a little bit about that from you guys and what brought you to Chicago State. Dr. Glass, I'll start with you. Okay, thank you. Um, so it's, it's really interesting. First of all, I'm a Roseland uh, resident. I was anyway, I grew up in Roseland and I now live in Washington Heights. So about three blocks away from where I grew up as a child. And Chicago State University was um, a college, a university that was in the neighborhood, and I knew about it. Um, I did originally go to UIC. I was a, um, admitted to UIC as a freshman. And at the time, and it's better now because I've since gone back to get master's, um, but it was a very hostile 
um, environment in the 90s for um, black men in particular, I would suppose I can speak for myself. I didn't like it. So I was looking for a place that would um, welcome me. Where I would feel like I was a part of the family. I was act actually at the Gala last night and they used the word village a lot. And it was very appropriate that they used that word. That's how I felt when I got to Chicago State University. Um, and at our school, the school that I run now, it's a small independent day school, uh, but we use three words to kind of define what we do. And one is affirm, uh, the second is cultivate, and the last one is transform. And that's how I felt when I reached that particular campus. Um, so that's kind of how I got there. I, I actually chose Chicago State because I did not feel welcome somewhere else. I was proud to have been accepted to UIC, but I didn't feel like it was home. Okay, I can understand that. What about you, Queenie? So for me, I was actually um, born and raised in the South Suburbs. So um, I, I do say I'm a Chicago native, but uh, you know, I'm from Madison. We'll and give you that, we'll give it okay, to you. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I, honestly, it was a bribe from my parents. Um, you know, we, we were 30 minutes away from um, campus. I actually had the, the um, I actually was a dorm, I actually had dorm life on Chicago State campus, and that was an awesome experience for me. Um, and that intro into, you know, um, grown, grown up life um, and that dorm life, my parents actually wouldn't allow me to get or have my car on campus um, my freshman year unless I went to Chicago State. And I think it was just, you know, for them, um, it was really about um, making sure that I was responsible enough, um, but also close enough. So uh, where I was raised in Manton, and it's only 30 minutes away, and they did trust me with the car. But to be honest with you, um, just, you know, it, they knew that they knew best because it was probably the best decision that I've ever made to yeah. go to Chicago State. That was a bargain well made. I just yeah. want to pause a minute and introduce uh, Major General Williams. So our last alumni that I would love to introduce right now has just joined us. And we have the distinguished honor of having him with us. I'll tell you a little bit about him. Lazarus gave a little bit, I'll give a little more. Uh, he is in town this weekend uh, receiving the Cur the Cougar Servant Leadership Award of Public Service. I was there last night, uh, Major General, so it's an honor to see you receive that and hear your remarks. He received that award last night at the uh, First Gen Scholarship Gala. The Honorable uh, Major General is a retired United States Army Major of the 38th Sergeant and the 38th Sergeant of Arms of the U.S. House of Representatives, appointed by Nancy Pelosi, making history as the first Black man assigned to that post, responsible for maintaining order of the, on the House side of the United States Capitol. And of course, we know we need that now. He manages all matters relating to the safety and security of the members of Congress, their staff, and their and the Capitol. Major General Walker is a Chicago State University alum, alumnus from the class of 1990. Welcome, Major General Walker. Thank you. Good to be with you. And I apologize for being late. I just uh, left uh, St. Sabina Grammar School on the south side where I attended. And uh, ABC News, Jim Rose, uh, had a, about a two-hour interview with me, and we just got back. Okay. Well, welcome back. And we love to hear about that and your journey at St. Sabina. I am a St. Sabina grad. We found that out last night. We had that in common. So that is what's so great about this discussion. We all connect on so many ways. We think um, it's good to let young people know they think they are so worlds apart. Here I am, a hairstylist. He's a major general. And we walk the same high halls in grammar school probably picked the milk carton i probably got the chocolate before you did left you with the white milk because everybody there was only a few chocolate milks available <laughs> so i wanted to ask elaine what brought you to chicago state and what uh, neighborhood are you hailing from so i'm actually from south chicago and it was a natural transition for me because i lived right across the tracks so right on the other side of the university is where i grew up and my mom worked there 
So I was on the yard per se um, as a kid, you know, so I, before there was, unlike Queenie, and we didn't have, you know, the housing and all of that. So it was a pretty easy transition for me because of proximity and I decided to stay home when I went to college. Yeah, I understand that. I was, I didn't share my story. I went to ISU originally. I did the long, long uh, four year program. Some people, <laughs> my parents say, some people graduated cum laude. I graduated, thank you, Lottie. <laughs> I did the long journey. But Chicago State gave me um, the found. I, I did my social part of pledged when I was at, at ISU, but I came home to really learn. And at CSU is where I really got all my real education in a major in accounting. Major General, tell us about what brought you to Chicago State University. Sure. So I graduated from the U of I, Chicago, UI Circle, it was called then. Hmm. Four years in and out, but uh, wasn't really welcome at uh, the University of Illinois at Chicago. So I decided to, um, I graduated from UI in um, 1980 and became a DEA special agent and I knew, um, I'm an alpha, and I knew that I would have a better opportunity um, for the flexibility I needed to work full time as a DEA special agent in Chicago, pursue a master's degree, and take ROTC at the same time because I wanted to be a commission officer in the United States Army, uh, in, the, in the reserves, actually. So Chicago State was the right fit. And um, some legendary professors worked with me. Uh, I think I had distant learning before it was actually established. So um, the program I chose was criminal justice, and, and then I took ROTC as well. So Chicago State, Southside Chicago. I lived on 75th and Aberdeen. Grew up um, Saint Sabina, where Saint Sabina is. So I could get to Chicago State a lot quicker than I could to UIC. Not only that. It was just, uh, I wanted that uh, experience of attending uh, historically black college and university. And although uh, I've heard that Chicago State is now considered uh, historically black college university, I don't know if it was then, but it certainly felt like it when I, when I was there. So I actually finished uh, Chicago State in, their, in the mid 80s, but I didn't go back and do the requirements to graduate until 1990. So I'm class of 1990, but I was actually, but I didn't uh, take care of all the administrative work until 1990. Oh, so that's yeah, that's good. the Yeah, the flexibility, and, and actually the the, um, the professors were all practitioners. A lot of them uh, really decorated Chicago police officers. Uh, Terry Hilliard, who was superintendent eventually, not then, but he was he was a graduate. So they just had the name recognition and I wanted a different uh, experience than I received at uh, UICC. Yeah, I, I had that same experience and it's good to connect the dots with you, uh, Major General Walker and Dr. Glass. He said the same thing at um, Circle Campus for him. He didn't feel welcome. That's what brought him. So that just affirms what Chicago State gives us that we may not get anywhere else. And I think we are listed as a uh, predominantly black institution, which aligns us with the uh, HBCUs, which is a very unique experience. It's a, it's a hidden gem that yes. um, students need to try and experience in the city. And for myself too, I had Carrie B. Lewis as an accountant teacher, a, a professor, and he, when we were in accounting classes, we were doing the books of local black restaurants in the city of Chicago. So we had practical, real practical experience. So my next question, I want you to share um, some favorite memories. And I love the difference. Some of us were adults going, some were students coming right out of high school. So your impact may be different. So what would be um, a favorite memory or a favorite time at Chicago State for you guys? Elaine, you could start. So I was working as a secretary in the early childhood elementary education department. 
And I went to Chicago State as my first full-time job right out of high school. So here I am the same age as a lot of the students and I have the responsibility for student aides reporting to me in the office. So, you know, we're there doing our work, of course, and I have to be the more focused and serious one. But honestly, it was some of the best times I had because I gained those friendships from the people that worked with me and we're still friends now. Oh, that's good. That mm -hmm. is good. How about you, Queenie? What about you? I'm going to go back to my dorm life, my dorm experience, because it really was amazing. You're the um, only one that had that, I think, of all of us. That's <laughs> It, and it, it was it was amazing. I felt safe. Um, I really was able to connect with so many people and made some really lifelong connections with those folks that I lived with for four years. I can't get into too much details because they say what happens in the dorms stays in the dorms. But there was plenty of light night pranks. Um, there were pr plenty of potlucks when people came home from Sunday dinners. They would bring a lot that, you know, their grandmother or their mother, um, they would bring back Tupperware. And we would all go in the community nice. um, halls to eat. Um, and then a lot of emotional moments where we would stay on the quad um, um, and, you know, just share e emotions, what happened that day, and um, a lot of hugging on the quad. So we, we had a lot. I do remember one, one moment where um, I had my jump drive and I was writing a 10 page paper and this was my final and something happened and my jump drive broke. And um, that was the day, th those were the times where I um, just, I had written my draft out before I had started. And I do remember my roommate um, and two other um, dorm uh, friends, we were in the computer lab until four in the morning and they really helped me write my, rewrite or retype my 10 page paper. Wow. And those are some of my closest friends today. Nice. That's nice. That's a good experience and be that close to home. How about you, Dr. Glass? Okay, a couple of things. So one, uh, we all look really good to have grad Even Quinny has been out of college for 20 years. So we all look really yeah. good to start with that. Um, <laughs> and the dorms were there when uh, when I was when I was there. I think they were built during my time there, okay. um, but no one bribed me to go to school. I had to pay my way through, so I couldn't, I couldn't afford uh, the dorms. I looked at them and I was jealous of people like Queenie. Um, I think my um, the thing that stands out to me the most, um, and uh, Major General Walker talked about this, was like the, the quality of professors. So I had um, in the English department, uh, Dr. Don DeWest, who's Kanye's mom, who was n no joke at all. I was in a class with Gwendolyn Brooks. Um, Haki Matabuti was one of my professors. And um, just the the credibility that they brought with them. Uh, back to what he mentioned before, they were practitioners. They were um, superstars in their industries and they were teaching me. And I just felt so incredibly special to be in their presence. Um, the, the, the push, the press that they would apply was something that I appreciated. I don't know if everyone appreciated it, but I felt like these were people who really cared about me and they pushed me as hard as they did because they wanted me to 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 shine they wanted me to actually have skills that i could take into the world and I, I will never forget that yeah and it's a great experience because like i said i had two experiences i went to isu so i knew the difference and i was just amazed i thought when i got to uh chicago state and the dedication i put to my courses i was like wow had i done this or i had this instruction from the uh, professors that really looked like me, understood me, it, it made a real connection. I probably would have done a different uh, a path in those years. I would have done something different. Uh, Major General, you spoke about, you had a, 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 the beginning of remote learning. So your education there was a little different. So how was that impacted? How was that for you? So, so for me, it was uh, a crucible. I, I'm at, uh, I get transferred from uh, DEA Chicago to DEA New York, and I still wanted to uh, pursue the ROTC program. So Dr. Scott, Dr. Zabalovich, the, these uh, professors allowed me to come to class when I could and then 
do remote learning. Uh, I would talk to them. I would mail papers in. They were just uh, flexible. And ROTC, the same thing. So um, I really, I had a lot of friends, um, fellow DEA agents who were pursuing master's degrees. And I had uh, my ROTC friends. And they all helped me. And I don't think I would have received that kind of help at, uh, at the University of Illinois. I was, you know, um, proud to be a UIC alumni. But it was just a difference in, in the caring and commitment that I received, uh, personal versus impersonal, uh, really, really caring about students as individuals. It, they, you can just feel uh, the passion that they had. Uh, and it really helped me. But, but to be able to mail in papers, um, there were no, at least I don't remember having fax machines. I would put papers in the mail. Uh, there was no yeah. internet, of course. Uh, there was, I didn't have it. And then, but I would just communicate back and forth with the professors and they worked with me and uh, it was a success. You know, I, I received my commission in the army and, and it, was, it was a different era of, uh, of professors, different era of, of people in our ROTC program, many of them were Vietnam veterans. Many of the professors had served in the Army or the Marine Corps and uh, had went to school in the GI Bill and gave back to the community. A lot of them were state police, federal agents uh, in the criminal justice program. So uh, I really, really, um, all of my memories at Chicago State are very, very fond. That's good. And I think this is you're touching on my next question and wondering when I hear from um, students or people that have gone to HBCUs, they always mention uh, like maybe they saw that in you. It sounds like I'm hearing that from you. They I think sometimes and reflecting on now that I'm older, I wonder, did they see that in you? Um, to make you become what you are today, the Major General uh, leading uh, the way, what you're doing now. Because the, my next question, and you can start uh, Major General Walker, how did that impact your career uh, attending Chicago State? Well, from, from a foundation of people who believed in me, who encouraged me and uh, who helped me find a way, it, it tremendously helped my career that I started out from a foundation that I could build upon. And uh, I, I just remember I would, Dr. Scott, he was a Kappa and I was an Alpha. So it was, uh, I am an Alpha, but he was a Kappa. We, we really had this dynamic tension, but he, at the end of the day, he helped me. He, he understood where I was going. So Chicago State had that and then some. So everything that you would receive in any place else, but and then some, it was almost, I uh, keep using the word personal, but there was this personal connection that I think we have. Uh, and it wasn't just from the, the black professors, it was some of the white ones as well. I think they understood the mission was different at Chicago State, that it was more of a holistic, a community type of uh, environment where we, we just operated differently. Then it was a completely different experience than it was at, at U of I. Uh, and, and then, and then I, received a master's at an American university several years later, and then another master's at, a, at the National Intelligence University. And it really made me look back even more fondly on, on the education at Chicago State. Yeah. And nothing against those other schools. It's just the sense of community um, was just different. Exactly. Yeah. It all builds us to where we are and we start somewhere and we know everything gives us something different. Dr. Glass, you've gone on to higher education and become an educator. So what was the impact on your career from Chicago State? Um, first of all, the major general, he just touched on so many points and we have so many similarities. It's really weird. Even starting with UIC, starting with that experience. Um, I would say that back to sort of what I pointed out before, just the, the way our professors prepared us for what was next um, catapulted me into my, my academic career, if you will. Um, I always tell people that I, I, I was smart. I was a bit of a clown in school at times, not college, but you know, elementary and high school. But I was very smart. So I, I didn't need to have those foundational skills necessarily developed. But they did 
push me. They push me to be excellent in every way. They taught me how to write well, how to argue and support my argument. And, and that's really the bulk of what college is about. So when I graduated from Chicago State, I had everything that I needed to go to these other campuses. I have um, six earned degrees. And I never had a problem in college because of what Chicago State University provided me with. The rest of it was really fun and games uh, all the way through doctoral studies because of what they deposited in me. And I, and I am very thankful for that. And I just really want to just uh, piggyback on something that the Major General stated. Um, it's not just that there were professors who looked like us. There was a professor who I ran into last night. Her name is Dr. Lisa Raymond. And she's a white woman who um, she, she pushed us. She was there for us. She made time for us. Her office door was always open. And those kinds of relationships and that kind of support really is the difference um, when it comes to Chicago State versus another um, university. It is a village and it's, it's necessary, especially for first gen students to have that built that wraparound um, service, if you will. I mean, they didn't call it that back then, but that's exactly what it was. They were affirming us, they saw us, and, and it's, a, it's a difference maker. Yes, it is. I was a first gen too. So I, when I went there and I knew it was like I couldn't let my parents down and I couldn't waste my parents' hard-earned money. And it was the two years that I needed to finish the job. Now, Elaine, you've been 30 years in the telecommunication. Uh, what impact did Chicago State have on you in your career? So it was like a family, you know, um, or a sense of family. And... The degree that I pursued was business management, and it was generic enough that it allowed me to do so much in at and I started with Illinois Bell, um, Ameritech, SBC, at and They split up when I first started, and now they got married again and all one big happy family. But um, I've worked in so many areas that I had a number of careers, but it was the real talk the real example of professors that were out in the business arena that were telling you what it was going to be like and what you could expect and that everybody was not going to welcome you into your field, you know, and that you had to be competitive and work hard, you know. So I learned a lot from just their actual experiences and then the sense of them pushing you, you know, and trying to drive you to be the best you could be. I've worked in, when you think business management, I worked in a call center, I worked in IT, I worked in legal, I worked in marketing, I worked in sales, you know, I'm in external affairs. So I have done a lot with this education and with the experiences I gained from the instructors just from CSU. And I'm grateful for that, you know, and it's some of them that I still am in contact with now for That's that reason. That is great. That is great. Queenie, what about you and yeah, just, uh, marketing? Sure. Just like the other panelists, it really just set the foundation. I actually took a PR class in um, college and it was my professor, Professor Olson, who also was a public relations practitioner, who really pointed out that I had a real skill set to succeed in this industry. And that really helped like spark my interest for the industry and really pursue a career in public relations. Um, I went to Chicago State with dr dreams of being a television producer, but it was an elective. Um, I took PR 101 as an elective um, and I, I did like it. Um, as a matter of fact, I loved it. And from that, from Professor Olson really um, taking the time to help guide me and mold me and understand what the industry was about, that led me to um, pursue my career right out of college. And I've been in PR ever since. That is great. That's great. So here's my thought, too, given the uh, first gen gala, it was the second annual and I serve on the foundation board. So I have been able to work directly with Chicago State over the last years under the leadership of President Scott. And it has been the most uh, rewarding relationship I have had uh, thus far, being able to reflect on my um education at Chicago State, being able to give back to those who had the similar circumstances as I have. So 
I want to know from you guys, uh, how are you staying connected to the community of Chicago State since you graduated? Um, Queenie, I'll go back to you. Sure. So I, like Lazarus, um, I currently serve on the Alumni Council Advisory Board, um, and I serve as a mentor. Um, and I'm always doing talks and uh, with other Chicago State students um, to help them, uh, to empower them and help them in their career. That's good. That is good. What about you, Elaine? So with my role, I'm actually working very closely with the president, you know, and, and Darius and a number of people there through my community relations and what we're trying to do to help students at Chicago State through AT&T. But, you know, I'm also mentoring there, you know, through the business department and then to the circle of friends, you know, and partners that I still work with now that are from CSU. That's good. And I'm glad we are proud alumni because I always, I always find people when I tell people and I start speaking on it, they're like, I went to Chicago State. I graduated. I was like, you should tell somebody. What do you do? You know, share that. How do you share, Dr. Glass? Um, well, I'm embarrassed because I'm not doing as much as you all, but um, this is my second year as a RISE Scholar uh, mentor, and it's something that is really, really important to me. I love it. I love uh, communicating with them. I hate that it was virtual last year, and I hope that we can get back in person this year. We started off virtually, um, but just to be able to connect with them is really important to me, and I'm actually... Um, Ryan Banks Academy is an independent day school, and we're actually in conversations with um, the dean of the College of Education, the provost, and hopefully we'll meet with the president very soon to, to talk about uh, launching, hopefully, a university laboratory school uh, on campus. I think it's, um, you know, it would be amazing to have scholars on campus to reintroduce uh, them to Chicago State University. Many people drive past Chicago State University, yeah. and it's beautiful, and they just keep riding. I want them to be on campus and to see just what the feel of, of campus is. I, I haven't been on campus as far as, you know, taking courses or anything like that, but I, I'm sure that the professors are as high quality as they were when I was there because that's just what Chicago State does. And the last thing I'll say, and you, you did ask me about my, my career and I went into like more of my studies, um, but as far as education is concerned, I have not met uh, an educator who came out of Chicago State University, who is now outstanding. So that's something that we're very proud of right. um, and something that the industry knows about. Uh, Chicago State University is, is serious business when it comes to, to education. Yeah, going back to Chicago Teachers College, right? Absolutely. If we remember that. What about you, Major General? I, I don't even know. Do they still have ROTC on campus? I don't know. So I, I came back uh, three years ago and uh, spoke to the ROTC cadets at the University of Illinois at Chicago. And uh, so when I attended Chicago State, there was a detachment at Chicago State that fell under UICC. So I don't know if, um, if they still have a detachment at Chicago State. But uh, for me, I, I, I haven't lived in Chicago since um, 80, 83. Uh, and I was doing this distance learning thing. I would fly back to Chicago State, go to the professors, do whatever they asked me to do, get on a plane and go back to New York or drive back and forth. So I asked, but I actually left in 83. And then in 88, I moved overseas with, uh, with the Drug Enforcement Administration. So I just, my brother called me and said, hey, look, you want that degree, you've got to do A, B, C, D, and they'll, they'll give it to you. And that's what happened. So I haven't been back. I haven't lived in the city. And so regrettably, I'm not able to uh, stay in touch with Chicago State University. But I can honestly tell you, whenever I come to the city, I'll go to St. Sabina for Mass on Sunday morning, and I'll drive by Chicago State, and I remember it fondly. Here's why my mother graduated from Chicago State University. It was Chicago wow. Teachers College then. And there's actually... Um, when I joined the Alumni Association, I received a book, and I, my mother's name is in there. And then uh, toward the end of the book, I'm in there. So Chicago State has a, a very warm place in my heart. It always will be. Um, and I'm really proud. It, my youngest daughter went to Kentucky State, and the colors are the same. Uh, yeah, nice. Kentucky State. 
So I kind of was like, wow, you know, Chicago State, Kentucky State. Um, probably will never move back to uh, the Windy City. Probably I moved 14 times with the federal government. So I'm kind of moved out um, with, with, with the Drug Enforcement Administration to include 11 years overseas. But uh, D.C. is home now. Um, but when I do come back, I do visit Chicago State. I, I just drive by. But the next time I'm in, I'm going to actually go into the campus and just walk around and uh, think about the fond memories I had there. Yeah, it's a beautiful campus. We cannot but deny that. You it cannot is. deny it. And, and like what Dr. Glass said, it's about this mentorship. So it's right. about giving back. Uh, I really, I believe there are no self-made people. It, it, we all are the result of a cooperative that it, you have to have mentors, coaches, and sponsors in your life, advocates, people that will help you. And I've had that throughout my, my career. I joined the federal government as a special agent, as a GS-7, the lowest, lowest level you can become an agent. And I retired the highest ranking black in DEA when I, when I punched out. And then the same thing with the army. I joined the army as a private, as a private, lowest level you can, went to basic training, boot camp, and then was able to get promoted to two-star major general. None of that was done by me alone. All of that was done with the help of, of, of this village of people who told me what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and I listened to them. And as long as you have those people in your life, and, and I can you know, say most of them were Kappas, so and, and that's the big joke. A lot of them were Kappas, but they treated me like one. And then I, I was able to do the same thing. So you, you have to have people in your life that, that care about you and that, that can mentor, coach, and sponsor you or advocate on your behalf. You need somebody in the room, not, not just in the room, but at the table when the decisions are being made. And they can talk about your performance. Because when they do that, two things are at stake, their credibility and reputation. So you have to perform. Somebody goes out on the line uh, and, and says, hey, let me tell you about, you know, uh, Elena. Let me let me tell you about uh, Aquinas. You, you have to produce because they won't be able to do it again. So I wish I could do more to help Chicago State, but I, I do a lot in, in the District of Columbia. I'm over at Howard University quite a bit. No, this weekend, what you have done is phenomenal. I saw the difference in the room last night. And the impact it will have going forward is undeniable. So we are greatly honored to attach your name to the university and what you're doing now, you know. And I want to hear that from everybody else, that path, like starting. I started as a shampoo girl. So you have to start somewhere. But uh, Major General, to finish up on that path of what you're saying, I want to ask you, who influenced you? the most in your career, do you think? Well, uh, I'll separate that in, in my life. It was my in your life, in yes. my life and in my mm -hmm. career, th there was a combination of people who who they were where I wanted. I thought I should be. You know, I, I was having fun just locking up people. I mean, uh, that was I, D.A. to me to me meant danger, excitement and adventure. And it, and it really was. It was an incredible experience. But, but people saw that I could do more, and, and they told me. But the, the most profound impact was my grandmother, my, my mother's mother. My mother died very young. So my grandmother raised us, and um, she was all about education. She was all about um, having goals, having a vision, staying focused, take yourself serious, being intentional. A lot of the things I shared last night, they were right from my grandmother, taught us. To, to memorize poems, to memorize passages. Um, a lot of the passages that I had to memorize as an alpha, I already knew. Uh, if Invictus, the test of a man. I, she sat down with us and told us about the power of, of your memory and, and how to memorize things and, and to, you know, and, and always, always take yourself serious. Um, yeah, so, that's, a, that's a great discipline. That's a great discipline. I know my aunt, um, who was born in 20, 1922. She was a hairstylist. I saw her growing as I grew up. And she was my greatest influence in my family. And 
uh, I noticed her disposition coming from that great migration from the South. I, I saw everybody else, they would go to work and they would be grudging at work. And my aunt always had this joy on her face because she was independent. She was self-employed at an early age. She took care of her family. And she always, this is a minor thing, but we all have experience in our home. But she always had money. She always had money. And I was like, wow. She never, and, and just seeing her happy and always having money in her pocket, I was like, it's something about that hairstyling. And so for me, I felt like I took her legacy a step further. I not only became a stylist with my degree in accounting, I opened up a salon. I taught over 30 girls how to do hair and to go out on their own. I knew I couldn't. Just what I do in my chair was not enough. And there was more than enough out there. I always teach the girls the abundance mentality because it's more than enough. So the ability to share and the ability, I heard you say something um, last night, Major General, about uh, what education does for you. It gives you the confidence to do things. And that's what it gave me and the ability to share that with someone else. Elaine, how about your career? I know you say you started in a call center and what was that path and who was your influence? So I started in a call center as a mail clerk, but starting at Chicago State, I left there to get with a major corporation before I actually completed my degree. Cause I didn't want to be, you know, knocking on the door when everybody else was, although there's a class every year, I still wanted to get started prior. So I was influenced by the fact that my mom wanted me to graduate and, you know, she worked there and like the major and other people, I lost my mom early. So my aunt became, you know, my aunt and uncle became my legal guardian for my sister and myself. And we basically were able to continue living like we did and our lives didn't change so we remained you know humble in a sense and grateful for the things that we were provided but at the same time driven so all of those things that happened drove me to be where i am now and starting from the call center to moving around the company in different levels trying to advance my career to where i am now what a blessing mm -hmm. i do where did you start in your career and who influenced you? So, you know, how I move and my, my success, my journey and my career um, is influenced by a lot of great people. I'll start off with my parents. You know, they grounded me in my morals and spirituality. I'm a very prayerful person um, and that helps me um, throughout, throughout life, not just in my career, but from a career standpoint, I have mentors like Christina Steed, um, who actually is the chair of CSU's board. Um, my supervisor, Danielle Davis, who I've been working under for oh, almost uh, 12, 15 years. And even our fearless CEO at Flowers Communications Group, um, Michelle Flowers Welch, um, they all three of those women, black, beautiful women, they taught me to always bring my authentic self to the table and knowing that that's enough, you know? Um, and they really helped me on my journey become the, the person who I am today as a, a PR executive. That's great. And I, I remember Flowers Communication starting like over 20 years ago. Definitely. When I went and looked you up and I saw the staff, I was like, wow, this small business has grown into a company. So that is, that's great. Dr. Glass, what about you? Who influenced you? And where'd you start? Did you start as a teacher, like in the classroom? Um, I actually started as a teacher's aide. And my first assignment was to stamp uh, the school's name inside of the cover of books. And I always thought that I was maybe a little bit more talented than that. Um, so I was, I'm going to borrow from the major general. I would say that it's two part. One, my mom um, and my dad, but my mom was really my champion. She, um, neither one of my parents really understood what I was doing, you know, like this whole education thing, because they didn't do that. They just knew that you go work and you, you fend for yourself. And, and, and that was their that was their understanding of how life worked. So 
um, what I was doing was really strange and not necessarily something that they 100% supported, but they loved me, you know? And so, although I was doing something that was foreign to them and it looked like it was a bit of a waste of time, they always supported me. Um, back to that stamp in books, I had a, a principal at that same school um, who saw something in me that I really didn't see in myself. Um, and it's not that I have self-esteem issues or anything like that, um, but he saw me doing great things and he invested in me um, on, on several levels. One, he would have me substitute. And he would only, there was a place called Roasted Chicken on uh, like 130th and Hostel or somewhere in that area. And he would buy me a chicken dinner. And I know it sounds stereotypical, but it was good enough for me um, to, to substitute in a room for a whole day and, and he would buy me lunch. Um, he would watch me. And, and fast forward, he actually invested in me. He found a scholarship and a grant combined. And he, he made sure that I went to Northwestern University, a place that I could not have ever afforded to attend to get my teaching credentials and my master's in elementary education. Um, and I'm still in touch with him. His name is Mr. Addy Borders. He's retired now. Um, he lives in Houston, but he is, he is someone who influenced me greatly and, and really helped my career. Um, take off as a professional educator. That's great. And and that's, and you know, listening to everybody, and I was just, I got lost in my thought for a moment because I always would tell my pastor um, that, you know, they would say at Christmas, all the college students stand up, you know, and they would recognize. And I would tell him, you have to recognize all students, you know, every uh, child where they are, because success for us is different. It is why we need this type of diversity that we see right here in our community. Our kids need to know, I love that I am here with higher uh, degree people, various degree people, various communication. Because I say we need our generals, we need our educators, our marketers, our telecommunication. And we need our hairstylists <laughs> in our community, along with our plumbers, our electricians, our painters, all sorts of trades that make up a community that builds our, like you say, Dr. Glass, that builds our village, right? Um, the Lieutenant Governor, who is a friend of mine, Julianne Stratton, her quote last night was, um, an African proverb, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go uh, more powerful, and I'm messing up the quote, you go together. If you want to impact more powerful, somebody help me out, go together. You want to go but far. You want to go far. That's the word I'm looking for, far. And we want to go far. And so we need to go together. And we need to be diverse in how we go. So here's my question. How do you define success? You know, what is success to you? Uh, I think we are the example. It's no longer the Dr. Lawyer Indian chief, but all of this, all this work here. So that's success to me, um, to become the best at what you can be and doing what you do. If, I got my degree in accounting. My parents had a fit when I graduated first gen and became a shampoo girl. <laughs> so I had to succeed. I had to. And it was my path. It's, and I've learned more about that, but that's another day, another conversation. But what is success? Uh, Major General, I'll start with you. What is success to you? So, so to me, success is achieving a stated goal or an objective. Um, and, I, I, and that's more of the military person in me. When you've been successful, you have reached a goal, you have achieved an objective. Um, and for me, that, that has been success. So I just said it, you know, when I wanted to uh, pursue my doctorate, uh, I have not been successful because I haven't accomplished it. Now, I've got some excuses, the tools of the incompetent. I have excuses why I haven't done it, but I plan to go back and, and finish. And the biggest excuse is what happened on January 6th, 
<clears throat> what happened on the summer, June 1st of 2020, the, the uh, civil unrest, civil disorder in, in Washington, D.C. So those are my excuses why I didn't do it. I tell myself sometime, sometimes that maybe I should have pushed harder or could have worked harder perhaps, uh, but it's, I have not been successful there. Um, so for me, uh, it's a very simple definition is when you reach a stated goal and objective and you've done it, uh, you, you are successful. And, and you have, I mean, you, you quoted something you didn't do, but, but there are tons of successes you have had. Yes. You know, and, and, but those, those successes I've had with the help of others. So absolutely so becoming a, a general officer, because be, becoming a captain, a major, a lieutenant colonel, a colonel, a brigadier general, a major general, a lot of people helped me. And I really didn't have those as stated goals. Because okay. so many of the variables involved, uh, becoming a deputy administrator with the Drug Enforcement Administration, never really stated that as a goal, but mm -hmm. that was success that led to additional success. People saw something in me and, and created an opportunity for me to accept, shoulder, and execute with additional responsibility. But, but a goal to me, uh, attaining a college degree, obtaining a master's degree, uh, something that you can set out to achieve, and once you achieved it, once you've captured it, you've been a success. Yeah, you know, winning a race. That's how I describe it. Okay, so would you say that the path of where you have arrived would that be a path you saw, or in hindsight, it made sense to you? So the path. What I saw when I was a student at Chicago State in the ROTC program, I saw myself being successful as a commission officer in the United States Army. I didn't see myself necessarily becoming a general officer, but I did think I would have a successful career. And what the Army describes as a, sex, a successful career is making it to the rank of major. Got so second lieutenant, first lieutenant, captain, major, you can retire as a major. You will get a pension. If you mm -hmm. retire as a major, if you've been a success, actually, they describe it as a complete success. Uh, you've done what the Army's asked you to do. In the Drug Enforcement Administration, as long as you're making arrests, you're seizing drugs, uh, you're developing informants, you've been a success, you can stay at GS-13. Uh, that's a senior grade. You'll get promoted 7, 9, 11, 12, 13. And then to go beyond, you have to have a lot more success consistently over time. Uh, so th that's kind of how I described it. Uh, that's how I described it for myself. I set out an objective. I reach the objective. I'm successful. Then I go to the next objective. It, uh, and Chicago State has helped you go beyond your your thoughts. And I mean, everything else brought you beyond your successes in, that you had planned for yourself. Without question. Chicago yes, State where great. really got the momentum to keep pushing. And once you have this irreversible momentum, I mean, you, there's nothing. It takes a greater force to stop the momentum. So oh, my love, God. That's a with Chicago State, just uh, I'm going to use the word spring loaded to to keep going. So then and Chicago State gave, gave that to me. That's something to, to keep when you have that momentum. It's harder to take. That is a good that's something to write down for all of us. What about you, Queenie? How do you just describe success? So just piggybacking off of Major General Walker, it's really about reinventing myself through short and long-term goals because even the small wins count, right? And some, you know, you have these large wins, um, whether it's up obtaining your degree or getting a promotion, but it takes the smaller wins to help you get there. For me, I have um, daily daily goals, um, getting coverage for some of my clients. You know, For a long time, I wanted to get one specific client in Forbes, and it was really about trying to go through um, and, and, and seize my network to see who I knew at Forbes that would be interested in writing about my client. And I obtained not just one client, um, you know, coverage in Forbes, but multiple from now mm -hmm. because you know that that person that I networked with is now a friend of mine you know and we work on stories together um, to something just outside of my industry I'm, I I started a tea business you know just mixing 
herbs and stuff at home and you know with with people behind me and they were like hey you should you know sell your teas and in 2020 i sat down and it was a small goal to get a website up and running and i started my own website you know so those are small goals that are going to get me to the the major my my major goals you know so i think that's how i define sex success that, that is great what about you dr uh glass how do you define it so for me um i've been thinking i, I was listening to everybody but um, educators are wired differently. I don't know if it's a good thing, but uh, we are. Um, I think for me, success is for me to pour everything that I have into my students, who I am, what I know, and then to watch them go further than me. Um, that's something I've always really uh, admired um, about the job and um, it's something that makes me most proud um, just in my work. You know, um, I've been able to Kind of move up that ladder myself and i and i appreciate that but that's not really what i see as being successful it's really what they are able to do um because they they came my way you know um and not that i had anything to do with their success besides just being there for them and supporting them in whatever way i could um that's my that's my um idea of success um as an educator i i I have educators in my family. I, my youngest is an educator, so I understand totally. And I am proud when I see that from uh, educators. Elaine, we're going to let you finish with success before they cut us off. I don't know how they made me moderate. I really talked too much. And they were trying to fill time. I was like, that's no problem. <laughs> but you know, finish up telling, you, telling us how you define success. And so I look at it as unending opportunities for growth, you know, so and it's where you start, you know, where your life ends and the impact that you have with that little dash in the middle, how you impacted other people and allowed them to be successful. That's how I view it. That is great. Well, I think I, my time is up. They're not kicking us off but I know I'm close to the end. This has been great. This has been such a great connection uh, with alumni and showing our talent, being a part of our greater village and spreading that wealth all across this United States with all our talents. It is my hope and my desire that we continue to grow this village, uh, that we continue to produce uh, students and adults that go and impact the world. As um, your award, uh, Major General, servant leader, that is something to aspire to, to attain, that we all should to look and make our own award for whatever we do so that we strive in that direction. It has been my pleasure to be the moderator, it's been great to meet such a diverse group of alumni and to be able to have just a real conversation. Um, I am to do this advertisement for Chicago State. If you would like to join the Village of Support for our current CSU student following in our footsteps, please consider making a gift by visiting www.csu.edu edu slash donate. I would like to thank everyone for this afternoon. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, I know Queenie, you're from LA. Those are here and you visiting Major General Walker. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.